understand about uh, what the Roman Catholicism uh, definitions about the Godhead. Now, in the Roman Catholicism, they say uh, Jesus is God, the Father is God, the Holy Spirit is God. But we have been uh, forced to say and acknowledge that the Father, that Jesus is not the Father. Now, whenever you say Jesus is God, they are not offended. Uh, even if you say to uh, the Roman Catholic Pope that Jesus is God, they have no any kind of a problem accepting that. Now, even if you speak with some other Bible students from different denominations, schools, or from different uh, denominations, churches, some pastors, they don't have any problem whatsoever if you say simply that Jesus is God. Now, the reason is because according to that, the Roman Catholic uh, the Trinity triangles. Which define they, they have they, they, they define it this way. Then they say the Father is as God, the Son is God, the Holy Ghost is also God. But yet they are one God in three persons. They're separate, separate persons. That's how that's how they say it. And yet they say they are three in one or one in three. And they would also say it's a quite incomprehensible, which means that it is hard to comprehend, it's hard to understand. Uh, you can say the Trinity, right? So this is how they define, this is how they would uh, uh, interpret uh, as far as uh, the, the God had a feeling to concern. So in this class, we'll be uh, you know, trying to see from the Bible, is it uh, true that Jesus is not the Father? Okay, we'll try to analyze that from the Holy Scripture. I think that is very important for us. And uh, the, the purpose of this uh, class, uh, this uh, learning is not to condemn anybody not to attack any organizations or any schools, but simply to see from the Bible what does the scripture say uh, concerning the, the deity of Christ as the Father. Does the Bible say, does the Holy Scriptures, uh, you know, declare that Jesus is the Father or not? Because in, 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 in according to Roman Catholicism, that the triangles in their definitions of Godhead, they would say that Jesus may be God, or Jesus is God, but He is not the Father. So we have been, uh, you know, we have been told that you should not, you should never say that Jesus is the Father. Now let us see from the Bible itself. And before we do that, let me explain a little bit more further. Now, if there is only one God in the Holy Bible, and if that God is uh, being addressed as the Father, and if Jesus is God, then it logically uh, follow that Jesus is the Father. But for those who somehow think that Jesus can be God and still not the Father, uh, we would like to offer some additional uh, biblical proof that uh, clearly define, or clearly, uh, clearly uh, you know, prove that Jesus is the Father. Okay, so we would like to see some of the, the references from the Bible. But first of all, let's uh, focus on the two verses of scriptures that are sufficient to prove that Jesus is the Father. Amen. We can give you many references from the Bible, but let us focus on just verse, uh, only two scriptures uh, that will prove that Jesus is the Father. Now, number one would be from the Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, which clearly says, uh, which clearly uh, calls the Son the Father. Uh, let's turn the Bible to Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6, one of the most popular uh, Bible reference from the Old Testament. Now uh, that would be Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. Uh, regardless of which verse that you're reading, uh, the Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, Behold the Son, the everlasting Father. I think that's very important for us to understand. So Isaiah 9 6 called the Son, the everlasting Father, and Jesus is the prophet the son prophesied about and there is only one father according to Malachi chapter 2 verse 10 and the Ephesians chapter 4 verse 6 so these prove that Jesus is the father because Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 calls the son the everlasting father now I've explained this many times now over here it's hard to understand how come how can okay the sons is now also being uh, <coughs> referred as a father. How can the child, okay, can be, uh, you know, also called as the mighty God? So we need to understand these terms that is used in Isaiah 9 6 
For example, the two terms, which is uh, the child and the sons, indicate the humanity of Jesus Christ. And that's a prophecy in the Old Testament. And that prophecy is fulfilled in the New Testament. So Isaac Nice is called, all right, the Jesus Christ as the son and also the child. So the two terms, child and son, indicate the humanity of Jesus Christ, where the terms, the everlasting Father and mighty God, uh, indicate the humanity, uh, divinity of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what we need to understand is, according to the Old Testament, it clearly says that there is only one Father. Malachi chapter 2 verse 10. Had not one Father created us? Had not one God created us? And then when we turn the Bible in the New Testament, we can see that this is for six of the calls, uh, you know, saying that there is only one Father, Amen, and there is only one God. And that, that one Father is our God, and who is above all and in you all. So both the Old Testament and the New Testament emphatically declare there is only one Father. Now, if there is only one father according to the Holy Scriptures in the Old Testament, New Testament, and if Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 calls that Jesus Christ as the father, then we know that Jesus must be the father, or we can clearly understand that he is indeed the father. Now, the second Bible reference we're going to quote over here in order to uh, you know, <coughs> understand in a very easy, uh, you know, in an easy explanation is that Colossians 2 9. Okay? Now, Apostle Paul calls uh, and proclaims that all the fullness of the Godhead dwell in Jesus. Uh, the Godhead include the role of the Father, so we understand, so the Father must be dwell in Jesus. How does it say in uh, this verse? So let's read out Colossians 2 9. Let's hear from Brother Abandonment. Let's just read out Colossians 2 9. <clears throat> The Galatians chapter 2 verse 9. I think that's uh, very clear. Mm. For, for in Christ, all the fullness of deities live in, bo in bodily form. Okay, thank you so much. Now, uh, I like the, the symbol that English that is being used over there. It says, for in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, I've been saying this, that the Galatians 2, 9 actually refers to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, based on the context, we can clearly <coughs> understand that Galatians 2, 9 actually refers to the Lord Jesus Christ. So here, Galatians 2, 9 said, for in Him. Now, in the bracket, you can write Jesus. Now, therefore, the, uh, the other verses such as NIV say, for in Christ Jesus. Amen. Alright? So it is true that for in Christ dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead. Or you can see the fullness of the deity. Now, the Greek version, uh, the Greek uh, uh, word for this Godhead would be uh, Theotis. Alright? It says Theotis, uh, which is, uh, you know, deity, which means uh, simply the deity. So all the deity, alright? of the Godheads bodily dwell in Christ. So therefore we can clearly understand here it says for in Him. It does not say for in them. Alright? So, so from this we can clearly understand that the Father must dwell in Jesus. Because the Colossians 2 9 proclaims that all the fullness of the Godhead dwells in Jesus. And nobody can deny that Colossians 2 9 actually refers to the Lord Jesus Christ based on context. So Paul is referring to the one and only our Lord Jesus and saying that in Christ Jesus dwelleth all the deity, the full deity of God. Amen. And then we also understand that Godhead includes, including the role of the Father. So the Father dwells in Jesus and this is the evidence and the proof. Now at this come to uh, these two verses of uh, scripture. We also know that Jesus himself taught that he was the Father. He did claim that he is the Father. Once when Jesus was talking about the Father, the Pharisees asked these questions and he said, Where is thy Father? 
And Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, you would have known my father also. And then, when you study in John chapter 8, verse 24, that Jesus went on to say, <clears throat> He said, I said therefore unto you, if ye believe not that I am, he, he shall die in your sins. All right? He clearly says over here. Now let's hear again from your uh, version. The Colossians to, uh, sorry, uh, the, the Gospel of John chapter 8, verse 24. How does it translate there? The, yeah, John chapter 8, verse 24. <clears throat> Eight twenty-four. Yeah, I told you that you would die in your sins if you do not believe that I am the one I claim to be. Mm. You will indeed die in your sins. Okay, so Jesus said that if you do not believe that I am, all right. So from here we can understand that Jesus was indeed claiming to be the Father, or in other words, he claimed to be the God of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac. Because when you turn the Bible into the Old Testament, Exodus chapter 3 verse 14, it is absolutely clear that the one who says that I am, that I am, was none other but the God of Abraham, Jacob and Isaac, the one true God of the Old Testament. He claimed that he is the I am, the I am. And then, here in the Zohar chapter verse 34, that Jesus says, to the Pharisees and the scribes, that if you, I said different to you, that if you believe not that I am, or in other words, I am that I am, then you will die in your sins. The Kings and Version use uh, this, uh, uh, this, the single pronoun here, he, but we should not be he, 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 in the word is the italic, which indicates that it is not in the original Greek, text simply added by the translator so Jesus was really identifying himself with the great I am of the Exodus 314 and therefore the Jews who did not understand his meaning they asked who art thou again right after that in John 3 verse 25 all right they said who art thou and Jesus answered even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. However, they understood not that he spoke to them of the Father. Let's uh, see once again from the King of the Bible, from our Bible, the John chapter 8, verse 27. Look at here again. Now, as soon as when Jesus said, after the Pharisees and scribes, I said therefore unto you that it is so that in your sin we believe not that I am he. He said that in your sins. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus said unto them, Even the same that I say unto you from the beginning. Verse 26. Now, uh, I have, I have uh, many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true. And I speak to the world those things which I had heard of him. Now verse 27 is absolutely clear. Now John here revealed it. Okay. Now even the apostle John understood. That Jesus claimed to be the father. Look at here in verse 27. They understood not. That he spoke to them of the father. Amen. The Jews did not comprehend. The Pharisees and scribes did not comprehend this. But apostle John. Okay. Had already understood that Jesus was actually claiming to be the Father. Now, who can deny that Jesus claimed to be the Father? So the question is, does the Scriptures, does the Old Testament and New Testament testify that Jesus is the Father, God the Father? What are the answers? The answer is, as far as the Bible is concerned, absolutely yes. Then why is it we have been forced over the many centuries after all right, 32580 from the Nicaea Councils. Since the 32580 the Nicaea Councils, now the Roman Catholic Church has been forced, they force the people, they force the pastors and the Bible teachers 
and the fathers and the ministers, okay, they fold God's servants, saying that you can say Jesus is a, the Father, you can say He's the, the second person in the Holy Trinity, but you should never say to the people of God, or you should never say to the church and to all the world, you should never say this, that Jesus is the Father. As I said at the beginning, if you simply say that Jesus is God, they, don't, they are not offended. They would be offended the moment when you say Jesus is the Father. But the question here is, does the scripture say, does the Holy Bible you know, testify that Jesus is the Father? The answer is, according to the Bible, yes it is. According to the Old Testament, yes it is. According to the New Testament, yes it is. So therefore, we as a Bible-believing uh, Christians, Bible-believing people of God, or as a Bible student, we would like to rely on the Holy Scriptures. Amen. And now, here you can see in John 3 verse 27, even Apostle John has already understood. He acknowledged that Jesus indeed right, claimed to the Father. Because in verse 27, he said, They understood not that he spoke to them of the Father. Amen. That is absolutely clear. In other words, that Jesus tried to tell them that he was the Father, the one who revealed himself to Moses as the I am that I am. And he's a, 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 he's a, that's a Hebrew word. Right? And that if they did not believe him or accept him that he is the Father, then they would die in their sins. So from John 3, verse 24, we can also understand this. That it is a very much important to believe in the deity of Christ and to accept that Jesus is God and that He is the Father. Amen. And we also do not deny that in His humanity, all right, that Jesus is the Son of God. Hallelujah. You have to understand the distinction between the Father and the Son. Hallelujah. So we both accept, as a Bible believing people, we accept that the deity of Jesus Christ. He is also the Father. At the same time, in His humanity, He is also the Son. Because the manifestation of God in the flesh is being addressed as the Son of God. So when God became the flesh, or when God incarnated and revealed Himself to the world <coughs> as a man, the manifestation of God in the flesh is called Son of God. Amen. And after when He became Okay, a fully man like you and me, he's also been known as the son of man and son of God. So we understand the term son indicates the humanity of Jesus Christ, and we understand the term father indicates his deity. And I don't think that nobody can deny that. So there are people who are still confuse and say, you know, that whether Jesus claimed to be the father or not. If we uh, study both the Old Testament and New Testament, it is absolutely clear that not just in one place, but over again and again, that Jesus claimed to be the Father. I think this is very important for us to understand. And I'm so sorry to say that even though we have many Bible colleges and seminary around the world, now let's not talk about other places, but even here in Delhi and CR, if I would ask you how many Bible schools, Bible colleges, Bible seminaries are there, I'm talking about those Bible believing people who claim to be a, uh, you know, believing the Bible. You see, some of the the Bible school advertisements will say that we are simply Bible believing, all right, institutions, Bible believing Christian, Bible believing church, Bible church, for example. So you will come across a lot of uh, Bible, you know, uh, believing fellowship, Bible believing uh, church, or the Bible <coughs> believing church. Uh, then he asks you, or you, you come across it in Bible believing school, Bible believing uh, institutions. But it's a very sad to say that the majority of those schools and Bible schools and their churches, they do not believe that Jesus' Father. Now, if someone would show up there and uh, preach, okay, in their fellowship, in their service, or in their uh, school, if someone would go and preach there that Jesus is the Father then obviously that majority of them would be offended. They would say, don't say that to uh, you know, the people of God. Okay, they would say that it's okay that you can say that Jesus is God, but do not say that Jesus is the Father. So why are they offended? Because 
they're not relying 100% on the Bible, but instead they're relying on the Roman Catholicism creed. I repeat again, they're relying on the Roman Catholicism creed. Okay? So what does it mean by creed? As I already said before, creed means I believe, which was adopted by the Roman Catholic Church after the Catholic Church was you know, <coughs> established in the Nicaea Councils. It's a fear to say that the Roman Catholic Church was established 300 years later after okay, uh, the birthday of the Church, uh, the establishment of the Church of Jesus Christ on the day of Pentecost, which is on 3380 or 3080. Right? Some scholar would believe that it was 33, some say 30, whatever it is, okay, after 300 years later, after the establishment of the Church of Jesus Christ or the New Testament Church or Apostolic Church, we understand all right, the Catholic Church was uh, established after the Nicaea Council. So after that, they adopted. Okay, in, in the Nicaea Council, stuff they adopted uh, and they confirmed that the Father, the Son, is of same substance, saying that the Father, the Son, is co-equal. The Father, the Son, is a separate, separate person. Yet, uh, both are God. Amen. Okay, equally God. Uh, if the Father is uncreated, the Son is of uncreated. If the Father is God, the Son is of God. But yet, they are separate, separate person. Now, this conception was already uh, approved uh, <coughs> and already, uh, you know, being established. However, 381 AD, at the Constantinople, they even fathered, uh, you know, as fully established that the Holy Ghost, too, is uh, uncreated. The Holy Ghost too is the you know everlasting God, and even the Holy Ghost is also the same substance with the Father, the Son, and, and therefore after 381 AD, I would say the Roman Catholic Church doctrine, the Roman Catholicism Trinity was fully established after 381 AD, according to the Church history. Now, why is it the people are offended? They should be uh, you in know, a proud. They should be happy. They should be rejoicing. If someone is written from the Bible and say that Jesus is the Father, then they should be glad and they should be happy. As long as you're quoting from the Holy Bible or as long as you're preaching from the Holy Scripture, those Bible-believing churches, those Bible-believing schools must be happy and rejoicing. And they should support. Suppose, for example, if your brother Ben is a... Uh, you know, uh, if he speaks in our Sunday service, and if he says that Jesus is the Father, we should say, Brother Preacher, I am preaching. I'll keep on going. We should encourage him. We should exhort him. Amen. But that would not happen. In the so called Bible believing school and churches around the world, I'm not talking about the Roman Catholic Church uh, Alliance and the Roman Catholic Church uh, and the Sister Concern, the fellowships or churches. I'm not talking about the Catholic Church. I'm talking about. The so-called, the Bible-believing churches, those who claim to believe in the Bible, who says that we believe only the Bible. For us, the creed is not that important. For us, the Bible is what it is important. Right? Who claim that they believe in the Bible alone. <clears throat> and uh, who practice the New Testament, the Bible doctrine. So I would like to... <clears throat> urge our brothers and sisters in Christ that if when someone would preach from the Bible at least appreciate it and acknowledge it. Amen. And if one of the preachers is preaching that Jesus is the Father, then we should be rejoicing and we should be accepting that. Why? Not because of what he, uh, you know, his background, it's because he's preaching from the Bible. So the question here remains, does Jesus Christ even claim to be the Father? I would say after reading the John 3 verse 24, it is absolutely clear that he claimed to be the Father. And therefore, Apostle John said in John 8, 27, they understood not that he spoke to them of the Father. In other words, Jesus tried to tell them that he was the Father and the great I am, who is the God of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac in Exodus 3:14. And then if they did not accept him as God, the Father, or they would die in their sins. Now in other places we see in John 10, 30, even over there, that Jesus claimed to be the Father. And therefore he said like this in John 10, 30, he said, 
I and my father are one. So I'm trying to say that he was one with the father, much as a husband and wife are one, or as two men can be one in agreement. But this interpretation attempt to weaken the force of the assertion Jesus made. We understand that that John 10 30, okay, and other verses fully support that Jesus was not only the Son in his humanity, but also the Father in his deity. And therefore, he said, I and my Father are one. He does not say, I and my Father agree or as one. He does not say, I and my Father are co equal. Instead, he said, I am one. Amen. That would be in Hebrew, Echot. Okay, the Lord Echot means one. Okay, if you would read that in the Hebrew Bible, it is the same as the Deuteronomy 6 verse 4, where it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Amen. One Lord. So, <clears throat> we can understand that based on even John 10, 30, that Jesus indeed claimed to the Father. Now, other examples we can give it some more uh, in additional proof. Because Jesus stated that in John 12 verse 45, He said like this, He that had seen me, or he that had seen me, had seen him that sent me. In other words, that Jesus is saying, if a person sees Jesus as to his deity, he sees the Father. Right? The different never just said, he that had seen me had seen the Father, or he that had seen me had seen that sent me. Alright? Even though my wife and I we are one spiritually and socially. But even I cannot claim that if you have seen me, you have seen my wife. Okay, if you have seen me, all right, you have seen my spouse. I cannot even say that. The reason is, even though we are one, because of that union, because of that matrimonial union, and because of in the spiritual that we have been united as one, but still then, my wife and I are two different individual human beings, so therefore I can never say, if you have seen me, you have seen my wife. But Jesus Christ said over here that if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Or if you have seen me, you have seen that sent me. So that means Jesus is saying if a person sees Jesus as to his deity, he sees the Father already. Now, not only in that place, we also see more additional evidences and a solid evidence where Jesus claimed to the Father. We can see that in John 14, verse 7 again. Now, when you study John 14, it's very interesting. Because Jesus told his disciple, if you had known me, you should have known my father also. He said, and from henceforth, which means from now onwards, you know him and have seen him. Now he used the two words over here in John 40 verse 7. He said to his disciple, henceforth you have seen him and known him. So the question here is, where and when did the disciple of Jesus Christ have known the Father and have seen the Father? And then all they have seen, all they have known is only Jesus Christ. So where and when did the disciple of Jesus Christ have the privilege to have seen the Father and to have known the Father? Or do they have the wings and flee all the way to the heavens and see the uh, seeing the Father sitting on the, uh, the throne of heaven? No, my friend. So where and when did the disciple have this privilege to have known the Father, have seen the Father? Because they come with the Lord Jesus Christ. All they have seen and all they have okay, known is only Jesus Christ. But Jesus already said unto them, if you had known me, okay, he said, you would have known my father also. Henceforth, he said, you have known him and have seen him. So therefore, upon hearing, right, <clears throat> upon hearing this statement, the disciple of Jesus Christ, the Philip, requested or asked his questions, saying in John 14 verse 8, is that Lord, see us the Father, and it sufficient us. 
In other words, he asked that Jesus so damn the Father and they would be satisfied. Amen. And I would say, we would be satisfied. We would be very happy. We would be very glad. If you are not a father, why don't you so us your father? And then we'll be happy. And right after that, Jesus answered. He said, have I been so long time with you? And yet has thou not known not, not me, Philip? He then had seen me, had seen the father. And the father, uh, see the father. And how sayest thou then, see us, the father. He went on to say, believe thou not that I am in the father and the father in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. In other words, he's saying, believe me on the evidence of the miracles themselves. Hallelujah. He said, I can understand that you people don't believe that I'm the Father. But on the ground, on the evidence of all the miracles that I perform. Okay, believe me on the evidence of those miracles that I perform. Amen. Because my works, the miracles that I perform is the evidence, is the solid proof that I am the Father. And a lot of people are saying, I believe in Jesus Christ. The majority of all the Christians around the world, we would all say, we would have no hesitation to say that I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the words of Jesus Christ. <coughs> or the majority of the Christian people around the world will not hesitate to say that Jesus is my all in all. I believe Jesus Christ with all my heart and soul. Now if that is true my friend, why don't you believe in his statements? Why don't you accept if you claim that you believe in Jesus Christ? Why don't you believe even the words of Jesus Christ? Okay, the statements of Jesus Christ that he claimed in John 14, verse 7 to 11. Amen. And never Jesus said, believe me, that I am the Father. He want the church to believe. He want you and I to believe. Not just that he's the, uh, you know, God, but even accept that he's the Father. Therefore, he said, believe me. Amen. What? What to believe? He said, believe me that I am the Father, and the Father in me. So where is the Father? According to John 40, verse 7, 8, 9, uh, you know, 8, 9, 10, 11, the Father is in Jesus. In other words, the deity of Jesus Christ was the Father. The Spirit that dwells in Jesus is the Father indeed. And who can deny that? And therefore, this is very, very important for us to understand. Like many people today, after studying uh, the John the 40, verse 8 to 11, we can understand like many people today, even the Philip had not comprehended that the Father is an invisible spirit and that the only way a person could ever see him would be through the person Jesus Christ. Now in another place also Jesus claimed that he is a father and Jesus said, the Father is in me and I in him. Let's hear from Brother Ben, I think that would be great. Uh, John 10, 38. Let's read out that one again. <clears throat> Where Jesus Christ indeed claimed to be the Father. John 10, 10 38. 38. Yeah. John 10, 10, 10, verse 38. But if, but if I do it, <coughs> even though you do not believe me, believe in the miracle, mm -hmm. that you may know and understand mm -hmm. the Father is in me, mm -hmm. and I in the Father. Again, oh, up to yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, uh, thirty-eight on the yeah. So here Jesus said, "If I do, though you believe, not me, believe the work." See, so he heard again. He said, "I understand that you want to believe me." So Jesus stressed the importance of the miracles that he performed. He said, "On the ground of those evidence, on the ground of those miracles themselves, why don't you believe me?" That. Amen. That the Father is in me and I in Him. <clears throat> Hallelujah. 
So Jesus says that here, in other words, I understand that you people do not believe me, but believe the works. Believe in my works. On the ground of those miracles themselves that I perform, the, the miracles that I uh, you know, performed are the evidence, are the solid evidence that the Father is in me. Or that I that, 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 that prove that I'm the Father. And therefore he says, that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in Him. But very sad to say that Roman Catholicism, the theology and the doctrines, you know, deny that Jesus is the Father. And they do not want to hear, even if someone would go and say that Jesus is not only God, but He is also the Father Himself. And they would be very offended. Okay, the moment when you say that Jesus is the Father in His deity, or if you say the deity of Jesus Christ, the Father, the people of this world will be offended. But as long as you say that Jesus is only the God, they will not be having a problem. Because according to their definitions, according to Roman Catholicism, the triangle and the Trinity definition, they said the Father is the first person, the Son is the second person, and the Holy Spirit is the third person. The Father is also God, the Son is also God, the Holy Ghost is also God, but yet they are not one. In number, they are one in three separate persons, or one three or three one. And they would even uh, <coughs> say that that is uh, the Godhead. It is uh, incomprehensible and it is fully mystery. And therefore, sometimes they even say this, that if you deny <coughs> the Trinity, that you will lose your salvation. But if you try to understand the Godhead, the Trinity, that you will lose your mind. But I... In that I give my response to many people, I have said it over again and again many times, that yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, and I deny those the Roman Catholicism, those statements, and that those uh, definitions, that the Father, the Son, is a three separate person, I deny that one billion times. I mean, but that doesn't mean that I would lose my salvation. Because salvation comes on the true Christ. Amen. So all I need is Jesus Christ alone. Amen. In order to be saved or in order to have access to heaven. Or in order to attain the everlasting life. Amen. And in order to <coughs> have that abundant everlasting life. All I need is to believe in Jesus Christ and keep his commandments. And obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's it. And therefore Apostle Paul says in Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 and 10. He said in him. So that all the fullness of God have bodily, and ye are complete in Him. So listen to chapter 2 verse 10 said, Ye are complete in Him. It does not that ye are complete in them, who is the head of all the principalities and power. So, all I need is Jesus Christ. <clears throat> because only He can give me that salvation. Because He is alive and resurrected. Nowhere it said, My Father and I, we, are the resurrection and the life. He never said that. Or he never said that <coughs> my father and I, we are together, together. He didn't even say that. Instead he said, I am the resurrection and the life. And then uh, Jesus promised to the father of all the overcomers, or over all the overcomers, in the Revelation 21, verse 6 and 7. Right? And then we also see that in John 40, verse 18, Jesus said, I will not leave you Comfortless. He said, I will come to you. And we know the Greek word translated comfortless over there is orphanus. Okay? Because if you study from the Greek text, it says the comfortless is how the Kingdom Bible translates. You can see that in John 14 from the Kingdom uh, version. The John 14 verse 18. All right, here it says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Amen. So the Greek word translated comfortless is orphanus. Okay, in the Greek text. And what does it mean by this comfortless? And we can understand that many, according to many uh, lexicon Greek uh, dictionary and concordance, he finds that comfortless as an uh, orphans or parentless or fatherless. 
So in other words, Jesus saying, I will not leave you fatherless. I will come to you. So even here you can understand that Jesus speaking as a father to his own children, his disciples, he promised that he would not leave his disciple fatherless. So from all this, the evidence we can understand, we can prove that yes, both the Old Testament and the New Testament does testify and declares that Jesus is the Father. And therefore we can proudly, amen, say that according to the Bible, that Jesus is indeed the Father. And therefore, Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 called the Son, the everlasting Father. Who can deny that? Amen. I don't think there is no one in this universe on this planet that, <clears throat> that uh, you know, any, any so-called Bible uh, preachers or pastors or a scholar that can come and deny this. That according to Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, that Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah calls that the Son, the everlasting Father. Amen. Because as we all know, that Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 is called the Son, the everlasting Father. And just see the, the, our, the extent of our hypocrisies being exposed over here. We do accept, right, Isaiah 9 6, we accept only the terms, the Son. So we stick to that. And we often say that Jesus is the Son of God. That's true. We don't deny that. Hallelujah. That he, that's true that he is the son of God. It is also true that he is the, the, you know, the son of man. It's true. But what we need to understand is the terms. Such as the child and the son is indicating his humanity. Whereas the mighty God and the everlasting father indicate the divinity of Jesus Christ. Amen. So nobody can deny that. And <clears throat> that Jesus is the father according to Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. For example, when you study Isaiah 9 6, who is the son? The obvious answer is, okay, Jesus. And if I were to say, who is the child? Jesus. That's right. The hundred bucks over there. Then let's go on and say, that what about who is this mighty God? To whom the prophet is referring? Jesus Christ. That's true. Amen. <coughs> Okay, that's according to the New Testament that Jesus is the mighty God. First Timothy 3.16, where Paul says, Great is the mystery of God in this, that God was manifested in the flesh. But whereas the modern version says this, and I be other one said, He manifested. And I want to remind them that He could be anybody, it could be me, it could be you, it could be the angels of God, it could be even the Satan can be said, He. Amen. But the scripture, when it's said from the Greek text, it does not say he, it said Theo, Amen. God. And if you would read that in Hebrew text, it says Elohim. <coughs> the God of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac, the one true God. Who is also known as the God of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac. God was manifested in the flesh. Hallelujah. So therefore we understand <coughs> that the channel. And the sons indicates the humanity of Jesus Christ. What are the two terms? The mighty God and the everlasting Father also okay, indicate his deity. And therefore, if I would say, who is the mighty God? The answer is obviously Jesus Christ. Then who is the everlasting Father? And it's also very interesting to uh, note this. But when you study from the Hebrew text, it's very understand, uh, it's very clear. Now the word or the term this everlasting father means from eternity to eternity that Jesus would remain as our father in heaven. Or he would remain as the everlasting father from eternity to eternity. Amen. <clears throat> there, there's nobody <clears throat> on heaven, on earth, and on the earth that you have who can replace that Jesus Christ as the Father and as the everlasting Father. And these are the reasons why, my friend, as a Bible believing people, I think we must stick with the Holy Word of God. So finally, let's also uh, uh, quote one, uh, one more Bible references and let's uh, conclude for today. 
Uh, Jesus told us Psalm 110, 1, and are the religious Pharisees and teachers, or you can say the Jews religious uh, leaders, he said, what do you think about the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said unto him, the son of David. And he asked them, how is it then that David speak, speaking by the Spirit calls him Lord? <coughs> if David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? That is found in Matthew 22, verse 41 to 46. Matthew 22, verse 41 to 46. David called the Messiah the Lord. Because the Messiah was, was more than just one of his physical descendants. He is the divine Messiah. Jesus is God. That means according to this uh, verse of scripture, we can understand again that according to the flesh, yes, Jesus was son of David. But according to the spirit, he is the God of David. Hallelujah. So that proved that Jesus is in his deity, he is the father. <clears throat> and therefore, the Philippians chapter 2 verse 8 and 11 Declare that the Jesus is given the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord, my friend. <coughs> Amen. And then finally, the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 8. We can clearly see, we can clearly understand that Jesus Christ claimed to be the Father, the Lord God Almighty. If Jesus is the Almighty God, if Jesus is the Lord God Almighty, it is absolutely clear that He is also the Father. <clears throat> and then we need to keep in mind the reason why we address God as a Father is because He created us. And if we turn the Bible again, the Colossians chapter 1 verse 16, it is absolutely clear that according to the Colossians 1 16, that Jesus Christ indeed he is our only creator and he is our maker. And nobody can deny that. Let's read uh, Colossians 1 16. The Colossians chapter 1 verse 16 clearly says, For by him, <coughs> which means for by Jesus Christ, were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions, or principalities, or powers, all things, which means whether heaven and earth, visible, invisible, all the planets, the sun, the moon, the stars, all the animals, all the hosts of angels, the cherubims, amen, the heaven and the earth, all things were created by him and for him amen it is not just created by him and for them if god is more than one in person or one in number if god is more than one at least the colossians chapter 1 colossians chapter 1 verse 16 apostle paul has to say like this <clears throat> all things were created by him and for them or maybe all things were created by them and for him but here it does not say in that way. Because beside the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no other God. Because He is the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega. And therefore in Isaiah 4, chapter 44, verse 6, Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, I am the first, I am the beginning. I am the first and I am the last. And beside me, there is no God. Hallelujah. That is according to the Holy Scripture. And when you turn to Revelation chapter 1 verse 8, it clearly says that Jesus claimed that he's the Father. Amen. How do we know? Because he said, I am the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega. Hallelujah. Because Isaiah chapter 44 verse 6 uh, is one of the solid evidence that God the Father is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And God the Father in Isaiah chapter 44 verse 6 claimed that beside Him there is no God. Because He alone is the maker of heaven and earth. And there is none like Him and none beside Him. He is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And beside Him there is no God. 
And when you turn the Bible in Revelation chapter 1 verse 8, Revelation 22 verse 12 and 13, did Jesus claim that he is the Father? How do we know? Because he said, I am the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega. Let's also read Revelation 21. <clears throat> this one, uh, Revelation uh, chapter uh, uh, 22, sorry, instead of verse 22. All right, look at here. And here Jesus Christ claimed to be the Father, the Almighty God, the Lord God Almighty. In verse 12, he said, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. Verse 13, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Hallelujah. And blessed are, do, uh, blessed are they do, uh, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. So blessed are who? Blessed are they that do his commandments. It does not say, blessed are those that do their commandments. It said, his commandments. Whose commandment? The commandments of Jesus Christ. Blessed are those that who believe in Jesus Christ in His deity, believing that Jesus is God the Father. Amen. That He is God that was manifested in the flesh, who revealed Himself the Son 2,000 years ago. And from the day of Pentecost, hallelujah, amen, who worked with His disciple in the Spirit and who remains with the church. Amen as the Holy Spirit who has always been his disciple with the church no more in visible form but in even invisible form and as the Spirit hallelujah so the Holy Ghost is all we know the Spirit of Christ so here we can understand that the word the scripture says that blessed are they that do his commandments so who are the blessed one that those who believe in Jesus Christ and do his uh, obey his commandments or obey his gospels that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. That means the heaven. Amen. So from all these references we can understand that indeed that Jesus Christ, not just in one place, He claimed to be the Father over again and again. Hallelujah. And also let's remember, the reason why we address God as a Father is because He created us. And when we turn the Bible to the New Testament, we can understand that Jesus Christ our only creator and nobody can deny that. Colossians 1 16 and also John, Apostle John <coughs> proudly declares and testifies that Jesus is our only creator and maker according to John 1 3. And right after this we shall uh, all rise up and pray and we shall write up here for today itself. And we shall see you again on tomorrow's uh, evening class. Let's see uh, John chapter 1. Amen. So we all rise up now and uh, uh, <coughs> read it and then we'll pray. Amen. The gospel according to the same John, John 1 3. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. The world knew him not. God bless. Hallelujah. Alright, so the